May 2015 uh, Ducati Hyperstrava which is kind of like a mini Multistrada only it's it's not originally actually based as a Toro it's, it's based as a uh, well this originally was the Hypermotard so um, it does feel a bit like that as well I would say it doesn't feel like a dedicated Toro for a start the seating position is a bit strange it's very very upright almost feels like I'm standing up. It's very smooth. Um, this little screen is, I don't know how much difference that's going to actually make, but um, it's literally like you know the same height as my chin. It's only about six inches away from my chin. So um, that's a bit strange. It feels like a supermoto to be honest, um, which yeah, it's okay for being a hooligan and doing wheelies everywhere, but I don't know, for touring, not too sure. feeling and that noise still feels um, still feels like a chicken oh I found it again the choppy throttle problem again sort of cruising along 40 mile an hour 3,000 4,000 revs it does lurch back and forward a little bit not particularly nice fueling at really low revs which again for a sort of bike like this I kind of want much smoother fueling than that at lower revs. But it's fine once you dip into the revs, but yeah, it's that same old thing with where some big B twins where the, the, the fueling at low revs does seem pretty jumpy. Now, in, um, in a lot of my other videos, you're always going to be talking about how long bikes just seem to hurt my nuts. And I haven't really had that recently. Most bikes recently, recently have been pretty easy on my gonads. Um, but already I've only been in this seat about half an hour and I, already I can tell that this is, this is going to hurt my nuts after riding it for quite a long time. Um, just because the seat kind of slopes forward a little bit. Um, which means that it kind of forces your trousers to sort of up and into your nuts. So it's not the most comfortable seat I would say. Certainly for a, a bike designed for doing, doing touring as well. Yeah, this has got a rack on the back, it's got panniers. Um, you know, it's a, it's a mini touring bike really, but the one thing that you want on a touring bike is a comfy seat. Um, although this seems fairly soft, just the position of it doesn't seem to favour my nuts. Which is a bit of a shame. But then that could just be my enormous nuts. I don't know. I don't think so, they're not that big. down punch you get from V-Twins. I'm not very good at riding supermotos. Yeah, this is um, certainly pretty agile. It's nice that you've got a bike that's kind of lively and fun like this, but can actually do all your touring duties as well, can carry stuff and people and so I guess it's Ducati's take on a, a small uh, touring bike which is to say on the more sporty side yeah the seat does seem fairly soft um, and it's not too wide either it's fairly supportive um, but yeah, it's just um, not as supportive as, you, as I'd like for a big touring bike. I know I keep talking about bikes seats hurting my nuts, but it's fairly important. Yeah, my nuts are fairly important. So yeah, this is based on the, um, the Hyper Motard, and it feels like it. It just feels like um, a Hyper Retard. Hyper Motard, sorry. I should stop using that word. Um, which, yeah, it, it's kind of interesting having a sort of touring bike based on a supermoto sort of platform. Um, I'm starting to like it actually. So uh, we're in sport mode. Um, let's swipe on.
pretty lively. Like, don't let the uh, the panniers and the, the screen and the, the Strada title fool you. It's, um, it's still a fun little bike and it's still a bit of a hooligan. You can get quite heavy on the brakes or mid corner. It doesn't really seem to upset the bike that much. It's quite twitchy over the bumps. But because you've got quite tall suspension, it deals with it quite well. But this little screen does seem to be doing a decent job. Some of the naked bikes I've ridden, this is definitely making a difference. Um, fueling's alright once you're at about 5,000. Uh, cruising along about 50, 60 mile an hour seems okay. It's just a narrow bit, it's a bit of a synergy. finger um, just for braking it's just one finger sharp but it's not really snatchy um, it does have ABS this model um, which is yeah I think it's a useful thing for a touring bike like this. As a touring bike, uh, I don't know, I think for really long tours it might be a little bit much in terms of it's not the most comfortable, um, the fueling's not absolutely perfect and um, it's a little bit jittery, well not jittery, it's a little bit um, flighty, which is great when you're on the right road but for just cruising along, doing long distances, yeah I'd imagine it might be um, a bit too Visceral, maybe. Right Saying that, because of the, the long stroke of the, these forks, it does do very well on bumpy roads. Um, when you do hit a bump, like if I was on that sport bike earlier on, it kind of shimmies me about all over the place. This thing just deals with it, hits that bump, and doesn't just send the bike off in a different direction. It's actually quite manageable. It's. Um, I guess it is a bit of a compromise with, with sort of super motos is yeah you do have that sort of taller suspension travel um, which does sort of compromise the handling dynamics a little bit um, but it does help it gives you a nice commanding position on the street so you can see over hedges and things like that and um, it does help on the box I do like using the clutch. I like flipping the throttle on the downshifts. I like doing clutch, um, clutchless gear changes. You know, chopping the 
not allowed. Stuff like that. Kind of makes me feel like I'm actually doing something. I guess that's what I like about this bike. It feels a little bit more analog. A bit more old school, dare I say. It. I enjoyed this. Uh, a little bit more than I was expecting, actually. 